The Battle of Cable Street was an event during British history which would see both communists and fascists fighting against each other for political dominance. This event would have serious repercussions to the already shaken political climate of Britain. But many still wonder, what exactly happened at the Battle of Cable Street? On Sunday, October 4th, 1936, Oswald Mosley, the leader of the British Union of Fascists, attempted to protest through the East End of London, a location that was known to be home to a large Jewish population. Oswald Mosley led thousands of BUF supporters, all dressed in their infamous black shirt uniforms, down the streets of the East End, hoping to spread their ideals for British fascism. This would gain the attention of the residents of the East End, as well as thousands of soon-to-be counter-protesters. A petition making up thousands of residents of the East End would be presented to the then Home Secretary, John Simon, to end the protest. To a surprise to many, John Simon refused to ban the protest, and even sent thousands of police to make sure the protest would not be interfered by counter-protesters. The counter-protesters, which would consist of British Socialists, Communists, British Jews, Anarchists, and residents of the East End, arrived in East London in an attempt to scare the BUF back towards the central London area, setting up barricades and making themselves visible in the streets. The clash between the BUF and the counter-protesters took place around Gardner's department store in Whitechapel, where an estimated 20,000 anti-fascists would turn out to stop the BUF. The police presence was large as well, consisting of 6,000 to 7,000 policemen, keeping the peace and preventing both the BUF and the anti-fascists from inciting any violence or maliciousness during the protest. The police, including mounted police, attempted to disperse the large crowd of anti-fascists in order to let the BUF protest. The following battle ensued throughout the streets, as the BUF, police, and anti-fascists saw themselves brawling in an attempt to accomplish their goals. The police tried to keep peace in the streets, but were met with heavy resistance as both anti-fascists and residents of the East End used makeshift weapons. These weapons would consist of sticks, rocks, pieces of furniture, and other improvised weapons that were available during the large chaos. According to some sources, there was even human excrement that was thrown at the police and the BUF during the protest, as the people of the East End and the anti-fascists used whatever they could to make the BUF retreat back from their protest. During and after the battle, around 150 demonstrators were arrested. According to some sources related to the battle, 79 anti-fascists were arrested, while only 6 members of the BUF were arrested. Although 150 were arrested, it is said that some escaped by the help of other protesters, as a way to keep the fight going. The Battle of Cable Street saw roughly 175 people injured during the entire clash between the BUF, police, and anti-fascists. Women and children would also be caught in the chaos, making up a sizable minority of the ones hurt during the battle. The battle ceased when Oswald Mosley ordered the remaining BUF members to retreat back to central London, as the police were gaining control over the area. After the battle, the government saw it fit to introduce new laws regarding political association. The Public Order Act of 1936 was passed, banning the wearing of political uniforms, and also forced organizers of large protests and demonstrations to obtain police permission. After the BUF's failed protest down the streets of East London, the BUF surprisingly gained an increase in membership. This was only short term, however, as the Third Reich's expansionism throughout Europe shaped British public opinion regarding fascism. Many historians would conclude later on that this event would be marked as the beginning of the end of fascism in Britain.